Okay, so Ubuntu Unity is out now for Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and this is my first look at it. I haven't even logged in or anything yet. And uh, I've got no keyboard support, so let's just plug in my dongle. The reason I didn't have any keyboard support, there we go, we're back, is because my 8 gig Pi just doesn't support it. It, it fails to boot. Uh, I've downloaded it twice, and uh, I just can't get it to go past a certain point. But actually, I've switched over to my, this is in my Nest Pi 4 case, and I think this is a 4 gig Pi in there. It's either a 2 or a 4 gig Pi in there, and it's worked straight away. So let's log in and have a look. So lots of options there. Where are you? I'm not in New York. There I am. It all looks nice. I like this bright color. Uh, so let's log in automatically. Oh, I need to create a password. Oh, it looks like there's some more installation to do. It's nicely presented. I don't know a lot about Ubuntu Unity, but um, others have asked me about doing videos on it and it, it just wasn't available, it wasn't officially supported. So people obviously must like it. Uh, it's not an operating system I've ever used before. So just looking it up on Google, Unity is a graphical shell for the GNOME desktop environment originally developed by Canonical for its Ubuntu operating system and now being developed by Unity 7 maintainers and UB ports. Unlike GNOME KDE software compilation, XFCE or LXDE, Unity is not a collection of applications. Uh, initial release 9th of June 2010, 10 years ago. Oh, it's come up with an error. I thought it was going to be all there then. Uh, no such file or directory. Whoa, keyboard shortcuts. That's something different. Alt F1 opens the launcher keyboard navigation mode. Looks like it's uh, very shortcut heavy, which is fair enough. Uh, so, Alt F1. Super. When they talk about super, they're generally talking about the Windows key, but they don't like to refer to it as the Windows key in Linux circles, so I'm told. Uh, so, super hold, opens the launcher display shortcuts. Right, so, holding the Windows key. Oh, okay, so that gives me that menu. Oh, and look, we've got numbers there. Let's, so, if we wanted to go straight into Firefox, do we press 1? Press it. Yep, yeah, it's loading. Yeah, that did launch. Just do a quick search and s yeah, server not found. Why is that then? Oh, it's because <laughs> cause I'm still plugged into my 8 gig Pi. Right, so I'm plugging it into the Nest Pi 4 case now. And we should see some action going on up here. Yeah, we are connected. Uh, so let's click on there and hit return again. My computer clock is wrong. It's not 6.42, it's 1.30. So if I right click on that, is that gonna let me? Oh, so it's set it now. So it's done it on its own. Uh, so if we try again, oh, this Google thing pops up all the time now, especially on new operating systems, which obviously I'm testing all the time. And I've lost mouse control, oh, it's back. Again, I haven't restarted this yet. So um, let's just take that it being slow uh, could be for the reasons that the operating system maybe needs to be restarted a few times. Uh, so agree to that. Let's see what our scrolling's reasonable, yeah. Uh, so I've got a trackpad on my Logitech keyboard and that's nice and smooth. I don't know how close this is to Ubuntu as in, as in how far they've grown apart as they're not developed by the same team. So let's do a bit of YouTube. So I haven't overclocked, haven't changed anything on it yet. And it talks about, um, so it looked i386, so like an x86 environment uh, for Linux apps, so maybe uh, things that aren't designed for ARM. It looks like it has support for that, but this is my first time looking at it. I'll link to all the information that I've got. Right, so let's just click on a BMX video. It takes a bit of time to get to that point. Now, audio wise, my microphone's plugged into my capture device which I usually take my audio from, but maybe we'll get analog audio. Error occurred, it's a good start. So I'm gonna do, oh, oh no, it's here. Look at that photo. Right, so let's click on the play. No, doesn't wanna play. Right, okay, well I, I'll go back to that at a different time. Uh, let's have a look at the operating system. So hold the Windows key and see these shortcuts. So Alt F1, Alt F1. Oh, well that's good. <laughs> that wasn't my plan. So let's try. Oh, 
So it looks like we're in. Looks like that was the right password to the one that I created. So let's try start X and see if that gets me into a desktop environment, which it looks like it's going to. I think I'm just going to try and reboot. Oh, now I've got a symbol up. Okay, so I might try Bluetooth for my speaker. So I've just clicked on the Bluetooth icon and got this menu up. I've just restarted, or I've just uh, put my speaker into pairing mode. So let's press plus and see if it picks it up. What are all these other devices? Right, so Bose audio device, that's what we want. Connected to Blake's video desktop. Okay, so we have sound now, and we've got that nice uh, nice menus come up there. Uh, right, so let's go back into, well, let's go into here and search your computer. Right, so if I was to type in Chrome, I wouldn't get Chrome, but I get other things. Cheese, backups, display, keyboard, sound. It's nice icons. It's a very nice looking operating system. I like the fonts here and everything. It does look very flash. So search applications. Yeah, it does look very polished. Files and folders. Search your computer. Music player. So it's a different way of doing it for all the apps. We haven't got a way of showing all the apps together, have we? So Firefox, LibreOffice, uh, software. That looks different to other software uh, stores. That's my 500 gig drive. That's my... Recal box drive, which I haven't got around to doing a video on yet, but I've uh, I've been using it for Recal box and it's working really well. So system settings, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks very much like Ubuntu. Printers, let's see if it finds my network printer. Double click, maybe it was one click. There you go. So my network printer is there already, which uh, ordinary Ubuntu seems to do really well. Uh, where's so when we want files and folders? Let's have a look and see, tie that, yeah, so there's a files icon, and it's here now, look, so if I right click that, can I pin that, yeah, lock to launcher, yeah, that looks nice as well, we're just spoilt for choice with the Pi, there's so many great operating systems now, uh, so home, desktop, documents, music, pictures, videos, obviously nothing in there yet, recent file system so let's have a look and see how it's overclocked or how you overclock it's in the firmware folder and it's user config.txt it's slightly different to some other operating systems on the pi let's try it with writer and see if that opens whoa look at all the options uh, right place config.txt changes in this file, please refer to the readme file for a description of various configuration files on the boot partition. So it looks like that's where you overclock, so the same as ordinary Ubuntu. Let's close all these down. Is that exit? Yeah. So network's already on there. Haven't had to do anything with that. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, it finds my network drive fine. Uh, so if I go to uh, work, I'll have audio and all sorts of things on here. So let's not try, yeah, this is my memory stick, music, see what this opens up in. Oh, and we're up and running. Obviously I can't play too much of it. Let's skip on a bit so you've got a bit of beat. Space pauses it. Right, so if I go back, Oh, no, I don't want to do that. If I quit out of that. Oh, there's an X up here, look, on the left-hand side. Uh, so go back. Go up one. 1080 video. Let's see what happens when I try and play one of those. So this is 1080 60, so not an ideal file for the Pi to play. Las Vegas. Take it in, Cupcake. I'm finally working the big league. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, a bit stuttery, but again, that's to be expected. And I haven't overclocked or done anything like that at all yet. Uh, I'm not used to this being up on the top left. So, and if I was to open an image, what happens? 
Yeah, that works nice. So let's close that down. So when we do all apps, is there a way of getting it to show all the apps that are there? Or do you have to do this, go to applications, and then maybe that's filter results all. So could that be everything that's on here? Maybe it could. No, because LibreOffice isn't there. See one more result. Here we can scroll. Yeah, I don't I don't quite know because that is that is apps, but not everything that's apps shows up. So home, files archive manager, text editor, transmission BitTorrent client. Oh yeah, so recent, so you can go so I can go back in if I was going to overclock, I could open that up and uh, and overclock that. Well, it looks pretty decent. Uh, so, I mean, I basically do this so people are aware of what's around. And uh, so this is something new. Uh, I probably need to look at those shortcuts again. Because I pressed Alt and F1 and it quit out. Opens launcher keyboard navigation mode. So that obviously doesn't work. Switches applications via the launcher. Super plus tab. So Windows tab. That's going through the launcher. I can see that on the left hand side. Super and W spreads all windows. That's interesting. So if we get a few things open, so uh, that's LibreOffice Writer, and then Firefox, and Windows W. Yeah, so it spreads them out. That's quite nice. I like that as a feature. And then you can go back into something. Obviously, some things, some operating systems have a shortcut or something like that on the desktop. But again, this is obviously very, this is very uh, keyboard centric, isn't it? And shortcuts and things like that. So I found this story uh, when I was just doing a tiny bit of research about it. Uh, and it says here, if you've been waiting for the return of the Unity desktop, your wait is over. Ubuntu Unity is a fresh take on the once defunct interface. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't want to accept the scripts. Now this version is 20.04.1 and it's alpha one. So it is an early version. So obviously take that into account. Um, it says that it's got all the new features and bug fixes of 20.10, but it's based on 20.04.01. What I saw in this story, <laughs> okay, it's all over the place. I'm not gonna be running this as my main OS for the moment, but I like the way it looks. Uh, it does seem pretty logical and uh, you know, given that it's in an alpha version, I think it's uh, watch this space again. And it says here in this article, uh, as I've said, Unity was all about efficiency and although the developers and designers of Ubuntu have done an outstanding job tweaking GNOME to look somewhat like the desktop users had grown accustomed to, GNOME is not Unity. For me, that desktop is missing one valuable component, the global menu and hub combo. Okay, so I'll link to this story anyway so you can have a look at it. But uh, they obviously seem to like this uh, operating system. It is in alpha, so give it a chance. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.